Hey everyone, it's Nurse Sarah, and in this video, I'm gonna go over the STI known as chlamydia. So let's get started. Chlamydia is caused by a gram-negative bacterium known as chlamydia tractamatis. It's primarily spread two ways, one way being sexually, so a person has unprotected anal, oral, or vaginal sex with an infected person, or during pregnancy, particularly that delivery part. So whenever the baby's delivered, they come into contact with this, they can get an eye infection known as neonatal conjunctivitis. This can cause extreme eye irritation or blindness if it's left untreated, or it could cause respiratory infections like pneumonia. Now, what are the signs and symptoms of chlamydia? How do you know if a patient has it? Well, this STI sometimes is referred to as silent because some patients, they don't have signs and symptoms. They're asymptomatic. So remember this mnemonic I created called silent with the first S being symptoms absent, but still infectious. So your patient may not have signs and symptoms at all, but they're still contagious and they can still develop complications of this STI. For patients who do have symptoms, it can present with increased painful urination. So when they go to void, it does not feel, feel very good. They may think they have a urinary tract infection. Uh, lower abdominal pain. In women, this can actually be a sign of pelvic inflammatory disease, which can lead to infertility and eptopic pregnancy. Excessive discharge from that affected area, wherever the chlamydia is residing, they will have this discharge. Neonatal conjunctivitis, again, that's from mom to baby during the delivery process. And then T, testicles swollen. In male patients, they can have this, which the proper term is epididymitis. Now let's go over the screening and the treatment for chlamydia. And this is per the CDC's guidelines. So it can be broken up with the screening with pregnant versus non-pregnant. So first, pregnant. What you wanna do is you wanna look at your patient's age. If your patient is 25 or under, or they're high risk, meaning they've had multiple sex partners, they haven't been using condoms regularly, or they have another STI that they've tested positive for, like gonorrhea, syphilis, HIV, so forth, or let's say they're incarcerated. They are at high risk for chlamydia. So you want to screen these patients at their first prenatal visit. Then rescreen them at the third trimester. Now, for non-pregnant patients, you want, again, to look at their age. So if they're 25 or under, or they're high risk, like what I listed before, they need to be screened annually for this STI. And testing, how it's conducted, is that you can get a urine sample from the patient, or you can swab the affected area. This could be the vagina, the cervix, anal area, throat, wherever the patient has been infected. And you want to also see if you need to check them for a co-infection, because a lot of times chlamydia and gonorrhea can occur together or even other STIs like syphilis, HIV, etc. Now, what is the treatment? Okay, again, it's based on, do you have a pregnant patient or a non-pregnant patient? For your pregnant patient, the typical treatment is azithromycin. And whenever they take this, after they take it, they need to retest at four weeks for a test of cure to make sure that this infection is gone because we don't want this to transmit to baby. And then again, at three months to confirm that we don't have a reinfection. Now, if we have a non-pregnant patient, typical treatment is doxycycline. Pregnant patients can't take doxycycline because it can cause bone and tooth abnormalities to that fetus. So with this, they will have doxycycline and they need to follow up in three months after treatment to confirm they have no reinfection. So what's some other education? Well, you would want to make sure that the patient does not have any type of sexual activity for at least seven days after they've completed treatment and that they are symptom free. And whenever they do resume sexual activity that they're using condoms consistently and that they inform their partners so their partners can be tested and that they can get cured from this infection so there's not reinfection that occurs. Okay, so that wraps up this review over the STI known as chlamydia. Don't forget to access the free quiz that will test you on this material that we just covered. You can access that via the link in the description below.